Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Hi, welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is Silicon Angle's The Cube. The Cube is our live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and we're here at VMworld 2014. This is our fifth year at VMworld. We're in Moscone South at the lobby on the right-hand side, just before you get to the escalators. Stop by, say hello. Vish Malshan is here, uh, he's with HP, Cube alum. Uh, you know, I'm not even going to tell you your title. You do so many things at HP. You, you <laughs> got a technical background, you do strategy, you do product stuff. So welcome back to theCUBE. It's good to see you. Great. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Great to be here again. We, were, we spent a lot of time together uh, last week, actually, right? We were in Boston. Yes. Uh, doing the deep dive. You had a bunch of analysts in, kind of doing the Kool-Aid injection. <laughs> I thought it went really well. You, you had a good crew there. It was a very interactive session, a lot of good feedback. You know, yeah, those yeah. are good. I mean, what'd you think? How'd yeah, I, I thought it was great. You know, in my mind, getting the perspective from folks outside of HP, just to keep grounded in what the reality is, I think is very key, right? And so we really enjoyed the interaction, the feedback you guys provided us, and, and the depth and time that we could spend on the topics, right? Yeah, I was there only for the first day. Um, I told you I was out golfing the second day of my <laughs> birthday. But, uh, but I got to hear the flash session, um, and, and then you know, the, there was a little bit of discussion on software defined, but I think you guys went into that in more detail the second day. So I want to start there. Sure. The software defined data center, you know, the, what used to be called the software mainframe. <laughs> <You know, laughs> they don't use that term anymore. The marketing guys took over from Moritz. And um, so we're now seeing that sort of instantiation. What do you make of all that? What's HP's sort of position on that? Yeah, so Dave, let me talk from a, from a storage perspective, right? Because the, the software defined data center is a very broad area, mm -hmm. servers, networking. Uh, so if we look at storage, um, there are two elements you want to think about. In fact, three elements you want to think about with software defined data centers and storage. The first element has to do with cost optimizations. How do you get the lowest cost storage? That's defined by software-defined storage that's hypervisor agnostic, that's uh, hardware independent, and that is controlled or orchestrated by industry standard offerings. So that's the first piece, right? Then there's sort of what I call performance-optimized storage to deliver on a service level. And instead of um, you know, collecting masses of hardware to deliver that service level, a lot of the optimizations are done in software. So as an example, priority optimization software to guarantee how much an application gets in terms of performance, how do you solve the noisy neighbor problem? Or here's another one, peer motion to move data between uh, say a flash array and, uh, and a tiered array for example, right? Just because it's a different service level you want to accomplish with that, with that offering. So, so this notion of a service level is really key. And the third piece, Dave, I think is this notion of orchestration, right? And I, I sort of view OpenStack, you had OpenStack announce with VMware as well. You know, it, it's the TCP IP of orchestration, if I can use that term, right? Um, you know, you, <laughs> <laughs> you want to be able to orchestrate uh, in a standard fashion. Uh, just like, you know, we used to have uh, DECnet, SNA, Apple Talk, and then TCP IP worn out, right? I think you've got that same phase here with orchestration today. Right, okay, so the reliable approach to to orchestration that everybody can trust, trust everybody understands, and, and uh, okay, so now, so, so that's kind of the high level. What's your specific product strategy around software defined? Sure, so, so we can talk about two key products. Uh, from, a, from a software defined cost optimized, we have the HP Store Virtual VSA and the HP Store Once VSA, right? These are both uh, virtual storage appliances that work on um, any storage, any hardware, any server hardware, right? We, of course, we'll talk about HP servers, but if you want to run it on a Dell server, by all means. Any x86. X, any x86, yeah. right? Um, we announced um, uh, support for, for KVM on the store virtual. Uh, we announced support for Hyper-V on store ones. Uh, we also announced uh, the store virtual offering being a part of the Helion, HP Helion OpenStack distribution. And if you recall, Helion, OpenStack is, has both a community edition and an enterprise edition, right? And so, uh, whichever edition that you get from Helion, you essentially have now a store virtual VSA built into it. Okay. Yeah? 
So, yeah, we know a little bit about uh, Helium. We've had Sar Gilai on a number of times on, yes. the, on the Cube, and, and we've seen HP's cloud strategy I evolve. Um, so, and we can come back and talk about that a little bit. So, relative to vSAN, um, I got to get your take on, on vSAN because there's so much confusion in the marketplace. You know, Chuck Hollis will write a blog one day and you'll, you'll read it and say, oh, hmm, maybe sort of dissing the, the competition. And then the next day it's like, you know, a lot of love and embracing. But it's, it's clear that one positioning for vSAN is you, you, you guys are not just VMware, it's more than just VMware, but yeah. what's your take on vSAN? What does it mean for your, for your strategy as an ecosystem partner that sells probably more VMware licenses than anybody? I mean, how sure. do you... Yeah, what do yeah, you make of that? Whole uh, that's thing? a great question, right? So VMware continues to be a, a very close partner with us, right? I think the introduction of vSAN and, and Evo Rail, I think it just continues to point to uh, and validate this notion of software-defined storage, right? Uh, in my mind, Dave, it's, it's, it's software-defined and flash are the two key disruptors. We saw that this year. I think going into next year, we'll see that sort of go even more mainstream, right? So you know, I think it's great to see. Uh, multiple offerings here, validating what we've done actually with software defined. Before it was even called software defined, right? If you look at if you look at Store Virtual and how we offered it. Right. Okay. And and so, just a natural progression of the ecosystem, right? And it's like uh, uh, VMware's a software vendor doing what software vendors do, grabbing pieces of the stack and. Hardware guys got to move fast. You know, hardware guys that do software got to move fast. Well, I think it's going to be interesting, right? Like, like any sort of emerging technology, there's always a, uh, a flourishing of offerings, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the great thing about this. It's, it's choice. You can say probably have different approaches. And let's see which one wins out in the market in the end, right? All right, let's talk about Flash. So sure. you guys came out last summer. Flash announcement, all Flash array, based on 3PAR. Uh, and made the statement, okay, well, we're not going to go buy a Flash company. We don't need to. Uh, a lot of people, I, myself included, said, well, maybe you don't need to, but Meg Whitman has said, we're not doing any acquisitions, certainly any major ones, so you really don't have a choice. So the question in my mind at the time was, okay, is this a bolt-on, a term that you guys used a lot when everybody was saying, oh, we have thin provisioning too. You said, oh, that's a bolt-on. <laughs> um, and you were largely correct, and so I was skeptical. And then when you came out with Flash last summer, the pricing was, in my view, not competitive. Now, fast forward to this summer. All of a sudden, you're under $2 a gigabyte. Um, your latency is down to best in class. Uh, wow, okay, what happened? How did we get there? So, uh, where are we with Flash? How all of a sudden did we go from really uh, essentially uh, an okay product with a great stack, that was really your advantage as you had the stack, to one that is now great stack, competitive from performance and a price standpoint? What happened? Yeah, so Dave, it's been a great year. Um, for the last 12, 18 months on Flash, right? If, if I can roll back the clock a little bit uh, and talk about some of the elements of change, right? I think, to answer your question first, what happened, right? There was a very big emphasis on Flash. We've had R&D developments over the last two to three years focusing on Flash optimizations. There were a lot of skeptics at first that said, hey, wait a minute, you guys are a disk-based architecture. Can you really do Flash? I think the, the proof's in the pudding right now, right? 900,000 IOPS. Uh, 200 microseconds of latency, write latency, uh, thin duplication inline, uh, switch data services, data mobility. Um, now, if you, if you roll back the clock and, and look at sort of what the ride's been, in December of 2013, we announced something called adaptive sparing, right? So we took now one very key flash optimization. We took an 800 gig SSD drive and looked at how over provisioning was done on an SSD drive and said, wait a minute, we can be a bit more intelligent with this, right? Adaptive sparing allowed you to reduce the over-provisioning capacity that the drive takes. So the net effect to the customer was they got extra capacity at the same price because we treated the flash differently from, say, a traditional media, right? And so a lot of times I, you know, I, I will tell folks, hey, you know, if you're really flash optimized, Mr. Vendor, where's your adaptive sparing, right? Because here's a perfect example of how I can take an 800 gig drive deliver a customer 920 gigs. That's 20% more capacity free. Right? So that was back in December where we announced adaptive sparing. This is one of several optimizations we did. Then in June of 2014, we announced sort of flash for the mainstream, right? $2 per gigabyte. We had uh, thin deduplication, thin clones, 1.9 terabyte CMLC drives, 460 terabyte raw capacity, right? Five-year warranty on the drives, six nines guarantee. We brought together a real collection of 
very, very compelling, I think, features that allow customers to take Flash to the mainstream, right? So far, we've seen great uptake on that. We'll talk about customers in a second. Um, we see not only just all Flash deployments, but people are deploying traditional high-end arrays, like a monolithic VMAX, for example, are, are really looking at that and saying, wow, you mean to tell me I can get the same performance, same resiliency, uh, half the floor space, maybe less than half the floor space, less power, it's a very compelling proposition. Is that the competition, VMAX, or is the competition other flash array? Well, areas? I think you've got both. You've got, you got other flash arrays, you've got also high-end arrays, and then you also have people that are looking for workload acceleration, right? Uh, consolidation, so it, it is truly becoming mainstream because we're seeing multiple use cases, mm -hmm. right? And then fast forward to September, which just a couple of days ago, we announced all flash 7200 starter kit for $35,000, average street price, Okay, and you know, if, if that was flash for the mainstream, this is now flash for the masses, and my first flash array, we let me use that term. And then here's where we're looking at that for Dave, right? So there are two kinds of buyers, right? One buyer says, hey, I have a limited absolute dollar budget. Say I've only got $50,000. All right, so now you have an offering that gives you that, that ability to go into flash. There are also people that are saying, wait a minute, you know, if I'm going to try out flash in my data center, 35K is a very low risk investment, right? Maybe it works great, if it doesn't, all right, we'll move on, right? And uh, so I think that's another very interesting approach to the way people are buying Flash. All right, you mentioned customers before, so I was going to ask you, how's the uptake? Have you seen, uh, you know, since you've made the new announcements, have you seen a big boost in, in demand and, you know, get any proof points that you can share with us? Yeah, Dave, so we've been seeing great uptake, lots of interest, lots of demand. Let me talk about three customers today, okay? So let me start off with Lattices. Lattices is a uh, cloud service provider. They're a managed hosting provider and they were looking for high performance storage to maintain SLAs, right? And in addition to sort of guaranteed high performance, they needed the ability to ensure that they could offer customers a consistent and guaranteed performance level, as well as a varied performance level, right? I may come in with a bronze service level that I need, and I want to pay for a bronze service level, versus say a gold service level, where I actually want to be able to offer that service. So, uh, lattices, put the 3 part 7450 and, and, and this piece of software called Priority Optimization to do exactly that. They also um, uh, use 3 part because of its uh, unique multi-tenancy features where you can run mixed workloads, you can consolidate different types of customers on those workloads. That was key for Lattices. And then uh, what they said to me was provisioning now took hours instead of days. Orchestration was quick and, and it was easy. Right? That was the big thing for them. It was simple to use. Number two, Nuance Communications. I don't know if you know the company. Nuance. Yeah, sure, yeah. Nuance, they make Dragon. Well, Dra they... Uh, Dragon, speech, rec speech recognition software. Speech recognition, right? Sure. So a lot of Apple, yeah, iPhone, Nuance. Siri. Local company. It's on the back end. Uh, yeah, local, local company. Local for me. For you. <laughs> um, uh, so, so Nuance does speech recognition software and they actually help, in the case of Apple, iPhone, Siri, uh, non-native speakers, right? By recording their voice patterns and then helping recognize those voice patterns, right? especially if you're not a native speaker. Now they use that 7450 uh, to index those voice files very quickly to deliver iPhone Siri service. To improve, improve recognition. I mean, you remember when iPhone first came out, yeah, it was yeah. the Siri was awful, you couldn't even use it, and now it's, it's so it much better. It gets better over time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a great case, use case there. Uh, third one is uh, Exact Target. Um, and you know, Exact Target is a um, uh, marketing demand generation company. Uh, they, uh, they have a huge number of databases. In fact, some of the stats that they shared with me was four trillion rows under management. They do 21 billion rows a day. 100 terabyte databases are not common, uncommon in exact target, right? And so they have multiple three power arrays to, uh, to, to store this data. And, and they deployed both tiering with flash as well as all flash arrays, right? And the biggest thing for them was how do they adopt flash without ripping and replacing their infrastructure. Right? They have an existing infrastructure, they wanted to be able to add flash to it to accelerate performance, lower costs, and then they also now are doing all flash for VDI. Right? So exact target is a perfect example here of a three-part customer being able to extend and embrace flash without doing a lot of change. Three-part, the gift that keeps on giving, I always say. All right, Vish, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming to theCUBE, Dave, always a pleasure. thank you, it was great talking to you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from VMworld 2014, and we'll be right back.